Healing with crystals is an ancient practice. Yet did you know that the essence of gemstones can be used in homeopathy? Spiritual awakening, self-awareness, and intuition are some of the gifts that gemstone remedies can bring to your life. Homeopath, teacher, and author Giovanna Franklin will show you a different perspective on the healing properties of these magical gemstones. Join us in Gemstones and Crystals in Homeopathy and discover the power of gemstone remedies. Hi, welcome to Crystals and Gemstones in Homeopathy. I'm your host, Giovanna Franklin, and I hope you had a beautiful Thanksgiving yesterday, and I hope you're having a wonderful Thanksgiving weekend, whatever you're doing. So today I am continuing the conversation about uh, numerology and homeopathy and gemstones and how they all fit and link together. So uh last time i was i introduced the um not the concept of numerology which of course is not a new concept but it's new for me and it's new for this uh for this channel uh for this show and um why did i do that because i started to be interested in numerology in the the past couple of years and i realized how much numbers link are linked with homeopathy with astrology because ultimately it's all about frequency and vibrations and we know this we know that even science and uh, um, quantum physics talks about this everything is vibration everything is frequency and numbers are the symbol of these frequencies and our ancestors knew this thousands and thousands of years ago and uh and these are linked with the planets and of course it was incredibly important thousands of years ago to know uh to know how to measure distances to know how far the planets and the stars were from each other it was super important for practical purposes for navigation for orientation but there was more than that because i suppose at some point somebody must have noticed that the proportions, the measurements, there are some proportions um, and numbers that recur in nature, like the Fibonacci sequence, for example, um, the, the, um, the golden proportion. And we can find this in the micro, in the, uh, the way that the flowers are um, made, the geometry of the flowers, but also we can find it in the macro, in the universe, in the uh, measurements of the stars and the distances of between planets and so on and so that has to mean something and our ancestors also realized that with numbers come certain energies certain vibrations and so this is really um this is really important and this is why we find numerology and the importance of number everywhere in the world um in any culture in any religion you can go back thousands and thousands of years it's there wherever you go so that has to be meaningful that has to mean something then of course over the centuries just like what happened with astrology um first of all they tried to ban this kind of knowledge and to outlaw it and then they simply ridiculed it, saying that it's, you know, it's just, you, you have to be silly to believe in this. It's only sort of a pseudo predictive pseudoscience um, and it means nothing. It's, uh, it's for the birds and, um, and it's for gullible people. Uh, but clearly it's not gone away. And there's a reason for that and now in fact astrology and numerology there is a massive revival for this and i discovered that numerology also uh, has something to do with homeopathy there is a reason why homeopathic remedies come with numbers of course we need to indicate the potency and the potency is indicated with numbers but there are certain numbers they're not in sequence so we're not doing one two three 
importance is we're starting from maybe 30 or we're starting with six and then 12 and then 30 and then 200. Why is that? And also the way that uh, homeopathic remedies are prepared, the process of trituration, which is the grinding, you know, with a pestle and mortar, that is very specific in the number of repetition of this process. So in uh, according to Hahnemann, and let's not forget that Hahnemann was an alchemist, and therefore he knew the power of raw substances and he knew the power of numbers. He um, instructed in his organon uh, to do the process, to repeat the process of trituration three times. In modern times, modern day alchemists, we can say, have tried different numbers of repetitions and found out that with each number, different numbers created different types of effects with the same remedy, starting from the same raw substance. So this is a very, mm, it, it's a very long <laughs> um, topic and I'm not going to go into it today, but it's just to show you that numbers definitely have a meaning and there is something about numerology in homeopathy as well, which I had not realized even after uh, almost, you know, even after over 10 years of, of practice, I had not realized it until I started to delve into numerology. So what I'm doing today, and um, because we are getting closer to the holidays and Christmas, so I want to do something that it's a bit more fun, a bit lighter, uh, but included including some numerology just for extra fun. So like I said last time, every year I do a gemstone remedy advent calendar and I start from the 1st of December, of course. And so today I wanted to give you a sneak peek <laughs> uh, into what I'm going to do um, starting from the 1st of December. And you can follow this on my Facebook page, Homeopathy Heals. So starting from the 1st of December, every day I put a new post about a gemstone remedy. And until last year, I was doing this intuitively, just choosing, uh, you can say randomly, um, a gemstone remedy and uh, choosing a new one every day. This time, I'm going to follow the law of numbers and numerology and add something to the to the advent calendar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take the date, each date, and uh, the way that it works in numerology, as you probably already know, is that you just simply add the numbers until you have one number. So for example, the 1st of December, you're going to add one plus 12, the month of December, and then 2020. Three, and what you get is 20 and you reduce that two plus zero is two. So you have the number two for the first day of December. And then you look at what that means in numerology in general. And numbers in numerology are linked to planets, colors, chakras, and gemstones because as we know also gemstones are also related to specific planets specific colors chakras and so on so you see how all this is linked together and so for the first day of december we have number two which is related to the moon Number two is the number of the moon. Now we know that when we say moon, we're talking about emotions. We're talking about um, feeling perhaps um, emotional can be sadness, it can be moodiness. Um, and when we talk about emotions, we also think about the, the sea, the ocean, because it is the symbol of our subconscious, water, 
is the symbol of our subconscious, again, emotions, what is hidden. So it's not a very active, let's say, day. For example, number one is related to the sun. So that's a very active, much more um, overt uh, showy. Astrologically mm, speaking, we can think about uh, signs like Aries or Leo, very active, proactive kind of signs. When we think about the moon in astrology, the moon is um, related to the sign of cancer. And so we have this idea of a more passive, a more gentle, softer, feminine. The moon is always um, related to the feminine, the nurturing side, the emotional side. And when we um, talk about the moon in um, gemstones, in terms of crystals, there are a few that are related to the moon, that make you think about the moon, that from uh, the point of view of appearance can make you think about the moon. And of course, the first one that might come to mind is pearl. Now, pearl is, um, is not a crystal, technically. Um, it's, uh, it's the product of the um, secretion of a live creature inside an oyster, a mollusk. Um, it is made primarily of calcium carbonate, so it is a mineral, but it's also an animal because it does come from an animal. So it already has this kind of uh, ambiguity. Um, however, it does relate a lot with the moon because it's found in the sea, it lives in the sea, and so we know that water, the emotions, the, the oceans are related to the moon in terms of the tide, the moon um, affects the tides, um, and so we have already this, this relationship. Um, in, uh, in terms of remedy, homeopathically speaking, pearl is, in my opinion, the natural progression of calcarea carbonica. So calcarea carbonica is the material that uh, makes the inside of the shell, of the oyster shell. It's that kind of chalky substance, not the mother of pearl, but what is underneath that. So it's a white chalky substance and it's pure calcium carbonate, um, which is again related to the moon. The, the idea of something that is inside a shell is already giving you the idea of protection, uh, nurturing, motherhood, which again relates to uh, the moon as feminine aspect, uh, motherhood and um, the sign, the astrological sign of cancer, uh, which is quite well known for being the nurturing sign, very emotional, very caring. Um, it, it is the sign of, of motherhood, uh, for sure. Um, so in, uh, going, going back to, to Pearl, the reason why I say it's the natural progression is that I see Pearl as, um, a mature, <laughs> um, a wiser Calcara Carbonica. So pearl, uh, when you think about the way it's formed, it goes through quite a lot. It takes a long, long time to form uh, because it's about these very thin layers that are added um, over and over. It's like an onion, this layer upon layer. And it also originates from something that is not very pleasant for the mollusk in its, it, itself because it's, it's a foreign uh, object that um, gets into the, the shell, maybe a grain of sand that probably hurts the mollusk. And so as a protection, as a defensive mechanism, 
the, the, the model starts to create this uh, substance called nacre and it starts to envelop the, um, the, intrus <laughs> the, the intruder uh, so that it doesn't do any further damage. damage. And so like many gemstones, in fact, like most gemstones, they are pretty, they're beautiful, they're rare, but they're always the result, the end result, the product of um, a process, a very difficult process that we can equate to, in human terms, to a process of suffering. So a journey of uh, suffering and then redemption, if you like, when you have this beautiful, beautiful product. Um, I'm getting some messages here. So kidney stones, does it help with? Okay, so pearl actually does help with um, with um, things like kidney stones, with nodules, um, with um, um, things that, um, how do you call them? Um, definitely definitely nodules um some things that appear even on the skin um excretions um that are round also um cysts um like ovarian cysts so pearl is has an affinity with uh female internal organs and so definitely the ovaries and assists it can help with that um and it also has um an affinity with um many female ailments related to uh, menstrual cycle or pregnancy um um pmt um, these kind of symptoms, um, the symptoms that, for example, before your menstrual cycle, many women um, have cravings for carbohydrates and sugar and chocolate. Um, that's uh, that's very much a symptom that belongs to pearl. So pearl, like Calcara carbonica, has um, uh, sugar cravings carbohydrates, a tendency to put on weight easily. Um, it also has an affinity with the thyroid. So maybe thyroid Im imbalances um, that can be, um, pearl can help with that. And in particular, um, emotional symptoms uh, like moodiness, um, like um tiredness, um, that kind of mental exhaustion. Um, I do use it for myself sometimes. So Pearl um, is this um, emotional, um, has this emotional picture. And very often is the picture of a very, somebody who gives a lot of themselves. So talking about carers, mothers, of course, uh, therapists, nurses, doctors, um, and they reach a point if they don't look after themselves properly, if they don't take a break every now and then, they can reach a point when they're just exhausted and they don't want to see anybody anymore. <laughs> and they, they almost lose that compassion that Pearl has, that naturally has. Um, you get something that I've seen actually on YouTube. Uh, I didn't know there was this expression. Uh, you, you can get compassion fatigue because you see so many, um, so many people suffering and uh, you give so much of yourself emotionally that you, you just, you're, you're running on empty. You've got nothing left to give and you reach the point when you just think, you know what, I don't care. I don't care anymore. 
I need a break. I need to be left alone. I don't want to see anybody. You become almost antisocial. You don't want to go out. You don't want to see anybody because it's too much energy. You have given out all the energy, um, all the energy that you have, and you need a break. You need to replenish. So pearl can be very useful for that. Pearl is also very good for migraines. Um, pearl has these crushing migraines um, and it can be good with that. When I, um, by the way, talk about these symptoms, of course, when we select um, a remedy as homeopaths, we need to take into account all the symptoms and the whole picture of the individual or the person that we are that we are seeing so um if you are experiencing migraines for example uh, yes pearl has that in its remedy picture however i'm not saying that it is necessarily what you need because you know you would have to i would need to know what else is going on with you uh, so when we uh, give, when we prescribe a remedy, it has to be prescribed based on the totality of the symptoms, the sum of everything that's going on with you that creates a picture and hopefully a clear remedy picture so that we recognize that, ah, that's, that's pearl. So everything has to, everything has to uh, fit in to that remedy picture. So if we're thinking about Pearl, I'm talking about someone who is um, um, usually female um, and perhaps having um, issues uh, with menstrual cycle uh, or emotional issues um, with tendency to put on weight um easily perhaps the thyroid perhaps with a history of you know th thyroidal issues that run in the family um so that it, it's it's a whole picture um that um that i'm talking about so there's nothing that stops you from trying if you want to uh if you want to try uh, a remedy there are no side effects um however just as a uh, i need to tell you that it may not be necessarily what what you need and this is what homeopaths are for particularly if you are um suffering for something that is chronic uh, i would definitely advise you to see uh to see a professional um i have another message here would a cancer would a cancer since it's a water sign benefit from pearl if Sina isn't helping? Um, so it really depends on what the symptoms are. So if you are mentioning Sina as a homeopathic remedy, now Sina is typically used for parasites. Um, and so the short answer is, I don't know. It really depends on what the symptoms are. However, Sina, like Pearl and like Kalkar, because it's related to the moon, um, it, does have the, it, it does have an element of uh, cyclo, cycle. Um, so if you have some um, uh, symptoms, that appear or aggravates during the time of the full moon or the new moon, and I know I have a lot of patients like that, um, then yes, something like pearl, but remember it's not the only remedy that has um, a link with the moon, the cycles of the moon, uh, but that might be, that might be um, a suggestion, yeah. So Pearl, again, um, talking about the picture, like Calcarb has a lot of fears. Um, and so particularly fear of you know, claustrophobia, fear of very small spaces, um, but a lot of fears in general. It is not a Pearl. Patient is not an adventurous patient. And again, think back to 
to the shell. Uh, the best place is the shell. And that's interesting because it's also a, a typical um, characteristic of the astrological sign of cancer. I know a lot of people in the sign of cancer and uh, I have a cancer moon and the best place is, is home. There's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing better than home and traveling, even going on holiday. Mm, yes, but yeah, it's always the, the best place is, is home and uh, not very adventurous um, in terms of adventurous perhaps in a, in an intellectual sense with very original ideas um, um, but in a physical sense not so much um, and uh, there's nothing wrong with that by the way I totally recognize myself in that um, very very home bound very home orientated people uh, love the house, love the protection of the house. Um, and I do know quite a few patients of, of mine, they are like that. You would not catch them camping in the middle of the jungle. They're not that that kind of uh, that kind of people. So really the the idea is to feel protected. That's the, that's the best. Uh, to feel protected, but at the same time, um, there is the fear of uh, suffocation, of being trapped into very close spaces. Because again, if you think about the, the oyster, it's very, very small, and there is this pearl inside trapped in. Um, so before moving on to the... Um, to a few other examples of the advent calendar. I think it's a good time to have a break and then we'll come back with more. Om Times TV. In my book, Gifts from the Earth, I illustrate the healing properties of 12 gemstone remedies. You will see real case studies from my practice and dive into the wonderful world of gemstone remedies. This is a clear and practical guide on how to use gemstones in homeopathy. Whether you are an experienced practitioner or beginner, you will find this book a fascinating read. Gifts from the Earth is available on Amazon. Imagine becoming a super influencer. Reinvent yourself, invest in your brand, and then manifest your success with a robust spheric approach. Ohm Times Media and Broadcasting offers a unique and multifaceted way to become the spiritual and conscious influencer you deserve to be by putting your message across our powerful platform with its proven record of integrity and excellence. Through our produced shows, Ohm Times offers the opportunity to become a social media TV personality, a radio show host, an Ohm Times magazine columnist, and a syndicated podcaster, all in one shot. By live streaming your show on Ohm Times TV and broadcasting it across the extensive Ohm Times radio and TV networks, you become more than a host. You become an ambassador and a force for positive change. Ohm Times. Open yourself to the possibilities. If I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Well, before you abuse, criticize, and accuse, walk a mile in my shoes. Hi, welcome back. So let's move on to the 2nd of December. So on the second day, uh, we do the same thing. So we add up all the numbers. So we have 2 plus 12 plus 2023. 20, and it gives you the number 21, and then you reduce it to 2 plus 1 is 3. So 
three in numerology is related to Jupiter. Now, Jupiter is the planet of good luck. It's traditionally called the great benefic. And uh, wherever it is in a chart or in a transit, it kind of amplifies everything it touches. And uh, usually in a good way, uh, or it can be in a, in a negative way sometimes, depending on what's going on. But that's from a, the astrological side. So um, in terms of um, gemstones, when we think about good luck and the great benefic, I think about citrine quartz. Now, this is one of the remedy. There might be other remedies that are linked uh, to this concept, but citrine quartz for me represents um, good luck, particularly um, abundance, financial abundance. Um, it's uh, traditionally the crystal that's related to trade. Um, it brings good luck in business. And um, when we did approving of citrine quartz and you can look back the I, I did a show um specifically on citrine quartz and um we we had a great time just taking homeopathic citrine quartz it's um uh well the everything about citrine quartz just looking at it puts you in a good mood <laughs> first of all it's yellow and in fact i have it here um it's a beautiful, warm, golden color. It's the color of the sun. It's the color of light. Uh, it's uh, the color that makes you happy. It's the color of sunlight, um, basically. So it's um, it's beautiful in itself. And um, and when we did approving of this remedy, everybody felt incredibly energized. Um, but at the same time focused. And uh, I remember um, one of the provers as, uh, has ADHD and she felt much more focused. She went through, she could go through a lot um, of tasks during the day in her day-to-day -day job. And she felt really, really concentrated her her focus her clarity her mental clarity was increased i felt really good i felt very optimistic so jupiter is the planet of optimism everything is going to be fine you see the the glass is always half full um it's it's just it's just great uh it's a happy happy remedy this is one of the very few remedies that i would advise to just about everybody. I think it will do everybody some good in different ways. Um, it will definitely give you a bit of a, bit of a boost, um, uh, you know, in terms of energy or emotional boost, you will see things in a more positive way. When we were doing the proving, there was another prover who, um, was going through some family stuff, um, a bit of conflict, nothing major, but a little bit of uh, um, a little bit of something that was going on in the family. And uh, when she took the remedy, she actually gave it to the rest of her family, and she noticed how they could get along so much better. They were actually working together. They had a business together. And you know what it's like when you have also, when you live with your family, but you also work with your family, it can be, it can be too much sometimes. And, you know, you start being a bit snappy and uh, uh, it can be a bit, uh, a bit uncomfortable. And uh, she noticed how much better she could deal with the situation, you know, instead of blurting something out that might, that you might regret later uh you could say things you could say what you had to say but in such a way that it was much more constructive and positive and would have uh, better results so yeah so this is a fantastic remedy and definitely i would um i would include that in my 
in my remedy kit. Um, the 3rd of December uh, is the number four. We add all the numbers up, we have the number four. Now, number four in numerology is the number of Uranus, the planet Uranus. And Uranus is the kind of wild card in astrology. Um, it's the planet of the unexpected. It's the ruler of um, Aquarius. And so the rebel, it's the unexpected, the rebellious side. It's um, uh, unexpected news. Um, it's also linked to electricity. It's linked to the internet. Uh, it's linked with technology. So everything that is um, out of bounds, anything that is out there, when we say something is out there, uh, almost... Um, weird, out of the ordinary. Uh, Uranus is not boring. Whatever you think of Uranus is not boring. Always expect the unexpected and it's also super fast. So things happen really, really fast. And, and you need to be able to deal with it. You need to, to know where you are. Sometimes it can be, um, it can be so unexpected that you kind of lose your bearings, you lose your balance. Um, so a remedy that and a, and a gemstone that reminds me of all these characteristics is Moldavite. So the first reason why I link Moldavite with Uranus is because Moldavite, again, is not a crystal technically, it's a tectite, which is uh, a natural glass formed by the impact of an asteroid a couple of million years ago um, that hit the Earth. So, of course, explosion, incredible heat, all the rocks around it melted and then cooled down, solidified and crystallized, and this is Moldavite. Um, so something that came from space, uh, something that came from space, suddenly with a massive impact, really um, destructive in a way, uh, with a big, big impact. And Moldavite um, is, is become very, very popular lately. Uh, this, is, this is a Moldavite. Um, so you can see, I don't know if you can see the color, it's green it's kind of dark green it kind of looks like bottle green i would say um and because it kind of looks like green glass it's very easily um there are lots of fakes it's very easily counterfeited so you have to be really careful if you're making a remedy from moldavite or if you want to use moldavite as a as a crystal um, you really need to make sure that you know the source and where you are buying it from. But it is a powerful crystal and a powerful homeopathic remedy. So I know a homeopath who told me she could not wear Moldavite, she could not wear a pendant on herself because the energy was just too much. It would make, make her jittery. And, uh, and she had to stop wearing it. Um, I have to say it does give me energy, definitely. I tried to take it off for a few days and I was wearing something else and, and I could feel the tiredness. And I know that I am kind of tired. It's the end of the year, we're all tired and we're all really looking forward to, to the holidays. Um, but I had to put it back on because it does, it does give me energy. Um, it can be uh, used to, some people use it to enhance lucid dreaming. Um, it's said to increase psychic abilities. Again, Uranus, the third eye, 
uh, the third eye and also the crown chakra. Uh, there is this link with, with space, with the universe. It's like a direct link um, with the universe. So it's a very, very powerful uh, crystal. And it has this connotation, this link with the extraterrestrial, as well as the, the spiritual, the metaphysical, um, but also the transformative power. Because Uranus, as a, as a planet, um, it has this, because of its impact, things are not the same again. So it has this power of transformation. And it can be... And it, because it can be sudden, it can be brutal, it can be, um, it can be difficult to, um, to deal with, to, to accept, which is why as a homeopathic remedy, I do not give this remedy lightly. Um, and if you want to take this remedy, you really have to be sure you can take it. And what I mean by that is that I would not give this remedy to someone with um, immune deficiencies, with a low or weakened immune system, because even in low potencies, Moldavite can be too much. Um, it can stir up things, so past symptoms or emotional things, particularly where there is past trauma, um, unless the individual, unless your patient is strong enough, you, you know that it can take it, I would not give this, not, not as a first remedy anyway. Um, I would prescribe something else to strengthen the vital force first and then perhaps if it's appropriate uh prescribe moldavite because it is it is a very strong very very strong remedy it's the remedy of truth and not everybody can take the truth <laughs> um sometimes you have to prepare you have to prepare people to gradually accept things um otherwise it's it's too much and it can be um it it can hurt it can be hurtful so if there is an unresolved um situation or traumatic situation it will come up and so you need to you need to be prepared okay um on the other hand, it can be maybe it's something that you need because you're stuck in a certain emotion um, and you need a jolt. You need something to shake you up and uh, get you unstuck from a certain situation, uh, unblock a certain uh, state. So if there is um, an obstacle to cure, something that has been stuck in there either physically or emotionally then moldavite can also help um but like i say it's a strong energy um and it's very very quick so when we did the um uh the proving of moldavite um it was interesting because there were um some of the provers loved it. They loved the energy. They absolutely couldn't get enough of it. It gave them energy. And some people could not wait to, to end the proving because it was just too strong uh, for them. So, you know, it's one of these uh, what we call Marmite things. Um, I don't know if you, if you, if everybody knows what Marmite is, it's this uh, spread made with yeast that uh, we have in the UK and you, you cannot have, you cannot have a middle ground, um, uh, you know, a balanced opinion. You either love it or you absolutely hate it because it's disgusting. Uh, you cannot have a bland opinion on Marmite. So Moldavite is one of these Marmite remedies. Okay, so moving on, where are we? <laughs> I 
I hate Marmite, by the way. I can't go past the smell. The smell is so strong. I can't get it, but my husband loves it. So where, what do you know? So day four, moving on to day four. Day four is a five, uh, which in numerology is the planet Mercury. And Mercury, we all know it's the planet of communication. It's the ruling planet of Gemini, for example. So communication, giving and receiving news, very, very chatty. Um, five is really the day on this day. If, if you have anything to communicate, if you are going to uh, advertise anything, for example, uh, if you're going to post anything on your social media, on a, on a day, on a five day, um, that's, that's a good day to do that because it's definitely the day of communication and it's also the number of um fame in a sense so in in the sense that whatever you do whatever you say is going to be remembered so save a, a, a day five for something that you want to be memorable that you want to communicate that you want to share and that you want to um to be memorable to be remembered by lots of people so emerald is a great gemstone so mercury is also linked to the to the color gray green and so emerald is a perfect uh, gemstone for this um emerald is uh the green variety of beryl and uh it has it it it's, it has this formation in hexagonal crystals, which is very characteristic of a lot of crystals. And it relates because of the color. Green relates to the heart chakra. Emerald can help the individual to open up and soften the heart, um, especially if there is past trauma. So emerald is... Is a very very hard gemstone very very hard it i think it's the second or the third hardest after diamond so when you think about that in a, in a symbolic sense it's somebody's heart has been hardened perhaps because uh you have suffered so much you've had so much trauma that you've just closed off very similar to natrum muriaticum which is the homeopathic remedy made from salt that's also about closing off emotionally in order to avoid disappointment avoid suffering you don't want to you you've been hurt once you don't want to be hurt again and so you just close off um emerald is even more so so natrum muriaticum um, will eventually uh, open up. Um, it, it is actually very, very emotional underneath. There is a thin crust of solid salt, if you like, but underneath there's a lot of water, deep waters. And so you have these cases of natrum muriaticum where you talk to the the patient and the patient is like no i'm absolutely fine i'm, I'm and he's laughing and joking and then you say something and then the dam burst and the, the the tears come out the emotion comes out it's very very typical emerald does not do that emerald is really really hardened very very close and so um they they will not allow themselves to to be vulnerable no matter what so this is the uh this is the remedy that i would give to uh someone who's had a lot of emotional trauma and cannot open up um so emerald is about spiritual transition uh, it's the stone of, uh, in ancient Egypt, it was the stone of Isis. Um, so it is about spiritual transition and it helps you accept um, your spiritual journey. 
rather than try and escape or you know run away from it because when you close off emotionally when you harden your emotion you're just trying to um avoid feeling anything so emerald really helps you with with that so some of the themes and some of the keynotes of emerald are feeling trapped um a sense of injustice um and a kind of fixed uh, mentality. So this is this is the way it is. This is the way I am. I'm not going to change. The world is not going to change. Nobody can change. And so I just keep my uh, my thoughts, my opinion. I'm not going to change the opinion of somebody who hurt me in the past. I do not accept that anybody can. Um, can change and therefore I am not going to forgive. Um, so it's very similar to, like I said, not not to muriaticum, um, another remedy like aurum, homeopathic gold. Um, so it's it's quite a depressed remedy, I would say. Uh, but again, it's about finding your truth and be able to accept it all homeopathic remedies are about truth homeopathy is truth because it's about bringing back your balance and you can only be in balance and in health with yourself if you know who you are you accept who you are and uh, and, and you, you don't lie to yourself uh so from that point of view, homeopathy is truth, then the difference, what you do with that truth. So in the case of Emerald is about accepting the truth um, of who you are and what you've been through. So there is a lot of grief with that um, to get over and again to accept and to and to forgive. Um the last one I'm going to do today is day five, the December the 5th, um, which adds up to number six, which is the number of Venus. And this is a day where you can relax. Venus is about beauty. It's about um, love. It's about luxury. It's about self-love. So you can spend a day and pamper yourself. So it's a good day to go to the spa. It's a good day to go have a massage or go out with a friend and have a lovely lunch and have a chat and just spend some time together and just enjoy yourself. Um, so this is a very good day for that. And Venus is typically the, um, the planet of the sign of Libra. So yes, it's about comfort. It's about feeling good, feeling good about yourself. And um, the gemstone that I would recommend for this day is rose quartz because rose quartz is about self-love. It's about um, feeling happy and uh, accepting yourself, being gentle with yourself. Um, if you're working too much, if you are <laughs> running yourself ragged, just slow down and you know think about what you can do. Uh, with your time for yourself to do something for for yourself. I have spoken a lot about rose quartz. It's one of the most um, widespread um, gemstone remedies, one of the, the remedies I prescribe the most. Again, something that I would recommend to take once in a while. It really does you good. It makes you feel good. So... Yeah, so I think this is a good time to um, end the show with the love stone, the stone of love, the stone of love. Um, but if you want to know more, you can follow my Facebook page, Homeopathy Heals, because from the 1st of December, as I said, I'm going to post a new article on um, gemstone remedies and do my advent calendar until the 24th of december after that i'm going to take a break for a few months um 
I would love to come back next year at some point with some new material, something exciting. But in the meantime, you can find me on Homeopathy Heals on Facebook. Or if you want to email me or follow my courses, my email is info at homeopathyheal.co.uk. And my website is homeopathyheal.co.uk. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas end of year and I uh, hope to see you soon. Bye. This show is not intended to diagnose, prevent, or treat any diseases or illnesses. The information presented within cannot substitute the advice of your physician or other trained healthcare professionals. The content of this show is for educational purposes only and is the expressed opinion of the show host and guests.